So welcome in, in uh, Gustave Roussy. Uh, very happy to have this meeting here. It has been a, a great adventure to, to go to this meeting uh, with Jean-Jacques, uh, William Lee, and uh, just want to give a few words um, of introduction. So this meeting was possible uh, because of different people, but mostly Jean-Jacques Trochon was uh, pushy enough to say, uh, I mean, I think that we have to think and answer differently that we, sh we do so far. There are a lot of people who are working on uh, alternatives to, to, to treat cancer, to prevent cancer. Uh, he has been, and he will tell you a few words after me, uh, he has been through a lot of people uh, working on uh, cancer and for his own purpose and also for making a lot of people participating. And he told me one day, uh, I would love to have uh, all these people working on, on different approach of cancer together in Gustave Rossi. And um, so we did it. Uh, Lex Egermont accepted it, and he will tell you a few words. Um, it was also possible because of Air France and Accor support who make uh, travel, uh, et cetera, possible, which was very unexpected at the beginning. But Jean-Jacques, once again, was uh, strong enough to, to get this approval. And the idea about this meeting is really to be uh, very flexible on uh, the way we are going to do. So we had some changes in the program, so sorry for the, 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 the last minute changes. But the idea is that a lot of people who are working on the different aspects of uh, diet, etc., on cancer will be here. And we'll have time for roundtable discussion. Of course, everyone uh, should be part able to participate, so uh, don't be shy. We have to really to, to, to discuss all together what we could do in the future to, uh, to use this concept or not use this concept, to prove that this concept is true or not. So I hope this, this day will be fruitful for all of you. Some people are going to arrive uh, during the, the next coming uh, minutes and so. And, uh, with that, I want to, to give the microphone to Lex Egamo. So Lex is our director in Gustave Rossi. He's, he was very enthusiastic when I, I spoke with him about this concept. He, said me, he, he told me it's a hot topic. So happy to welcome those people in Gustave Rossi. And Lex, please. Merci, uh, Bernard. So uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Welcome to uh, Gustave Rossi. Um, gives me a particular pleasure to see that uh, we will have a conference on a topic that we never had a conference, a specific conference uh, uh, about. And I want to uh, thank uh, Jean-Jacques in particular. Uh, I was in the US uh, these last uh, few days and I missed your email, but I just want to make a little point about that because uh, I read it uh, this morning. I want to thank you uh, for your email. It's, um, it's a magnificent email, I'm not going to read it to you, uh, but it shows what a person can do uh, in terms of uh, supporting a, a cause and thinking in a very innovative way to get people together uh, at a site which is dedicated to innovation and access to innovation. So you must understand that Gustave Roussy on the one hand is uh, the largest uh, comprehensive cancer center in Europe, but that we have made it a point that um, everything is focused on innovation, is uh, uh, creating a program that uh, is the largest in terms of bringing new uh, uh, treatments uh, and access to new treatments to patients. In terms of early clinical trials in France, we actually take care of more than 50% for the whole country, so it has a national um, uh, importance uh, what we have uh, created at Gustave Roussy. Now they say you are what you feed, what you eat, and uh, that's uh, that's very true because the largest part of the surface of our body that communicates with uh, the environment is uh, the small bowel, and so food and uh, processed food is just one of the problems that uh, we are dealing with uh, in uh, carcinogenesis and in. Uh, programming our immune system, and that's what you will be uh, talking about uh, today, is how uh, uh, food intake and calorie intake and calorie restriction and fasting actually plays a very important role in how we uh, 
are being programmed by our environment and we can choose our environment. Uh, this is one of the few things we actually can choose. We can make a choice how we eat and what we eat and how this may help us to uh, lead a healthier life. So in the Abruzzi in Italy, there are villages where uh, there are more people who reach the age of 100 years than anywhere else in Europe. And uh, when you look at those villages, it seems to be uh, relatively simple, uh, apart from the fact that there's no air pollution. Uh, it's in particular the way uh, they eat and the way they eat only things that they grow around uh, their villages. And uh, that uh, leads to two observations. Not only do these villages have more uh, centenaires than anybody else uh, in Europe, but also there is an, a surprisingly low incidence of um, Alzheimer disease in the, these villages. So it's all true that you are what you eat. We just need to figure out how to uh, do this. And since cancer is the result of not only uh, genetic predisposition, but how we interact with uh, our environment, this is a very timely topic. And uh, I think it's wonderful that you all came uh, to uh, this conference and that you have dedicated discussions to evaluate and to discuss uh, the research uh, in this domain. So Jean-Jacques, thank you very much. Bernard, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I think you're both uh, enigmatic because you represent uh, something that uh, is very dear and crucial to uh, uh, practicing in oncology, and it's uh, the relationship between uh, uh, patients and uh, physicians. And I think in both uh, domains, uh, you are uh, examples of how fruitful uh, this can be and how uh, it can lead to new initiatives and new way of thinking. So rethinking cancer is the right title. And I think um, in a couple of years, we will say, I ah, remember that we had this conference because it spurred us on to do and launch a number of uh, repurposing and refocusing research programs also on this aspect. And I hope it will be to the benefit uh, of us all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lex. So I want to introduce Jean-Jacques. So Jean-Jacques Trochon, probably everyone knows Jean-Jacques. So Jean-Jacques is, uh, first of all, he's a pilot on Air France. So he's, uh, he might uh, make your flight easy someday. So if you hear that uh, the commandant of board is Jean-Jacques Trochon, go and uh, ask him. And in, in addition to that, he had kidney cancer uh, some years ago. That's why I met him. And um, he has an incredible uh, enthusiasm, and he wants to take care of himself. He wants to know and understand his disease, to try to do his best to be cured. And so far, I hope he's cured. So um, I'm going to ask Jean-Jacques to say some words, because he was at the initiative of this meeting, and uh, thanks to him, his meeting is here. So Jean-Jacques. <laughs> Bonjour, good morning everyone. Um, I am so happy to be able to be uh, standing here tonight, uh, today uh, for this incredible meeting. Um, I'm just going to be very short because it's not about me, it's about uh, millions of people. Um, we each have uh, terrible stories to tell uh, among our families. Um, I must say I've been to hell and back uh, more than once, actually four times. Uh, and uh, at some stage I didn't think I was going to make it, but I was very, very fortunate to, um, to actually meet uh, people like Bernard, who, uh, like uh, Lex, you just said, um, um, we have a very special, or we have to have, I think, a very special um, relationship between doctor and patient. Um, and this all came from the fact that after um, long years of studies, of research myself, um, having the help of, uh, of uh, many doctors around, um, I came up with an idea to actually recenter the position of the patient. 
uh, in this fight against cancer, but against other illnesses as well. Um, uh, as you know, things are very simple uh, to start with, and then cancer is a very complicated beast. Uh, but cancer specialist doctors know about this much better than anybody else. Uh, doctors are doing a wonderful job um, every day, and I, I see that. I, I see them work, and they look after the patients, and they worry about the patients. Um, but I think if we can um, try to find uh, causes that are but maybe more logical and simple to help uh, maybe uh, curing some of the early illnesses, we might get somewhere um, earlier than we think. Um, as we know, um, about a hundred years ago, human beings were eating about two kilograms of sugar per person and per year. That's four pounds per person and per year. We now have 80 kilograms per year per person. That's 40 times more. And I don't think the body is able to cope with this. Mitochondria is, you know, our little, uh, little, uh, what do you call them? The uh, machines that produce the energy uh, are just overwhelmed with all of this. And then if you count the number of um, pesticides and herbicides, the French government, no more than three weeks ago, have been coming up, you know, on the story about cancelling some of those things that are spread around. Um, and it's not the first time. And, you know, this whole thing together makes the body um, much more difficult uh, to cope with uh, illnesses than, than what it was about a hundred years ago. Um, they had other problems, but it is true what Lex just been saying that in some part of the world, life is simple and suddenly um, you see nothing of what we have to cope with in our modern societies. So I just had the idea, look, I'm a pilot. Uh, I, fly, I fly airplanes every day and, um, or every month. Uh, if you stay within uh, a, a certain uh, area uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a volume uh, that is designed uh, to fly the airplane, then the airplane is safe. If you go outside, you don't know what you do. So it's, it's exactly the same uh, logic that I, that I started here. If you are going to try things that um, make no sense in, in, in this approach, you never know where you're going to go, and you've got risks of, um, of, of, of getting ill very quickly, and it's not going to get any better. But if you follow procedures, and you listen to doctors, and doctors are willing to go an extra mile to understand things, then you, know, you stay within a volume of knowledge, and you know where you're going. So you get maybe a better chance to get going. I want to let uh, the dream team that I got going, uh, I call them the, the dream team, all these fantastic people that came from abroad. Bena is part of it, Lex is part of it, all the doctors are part of it. Um, what is important to understand is that young doctors nowadays are part of this whole family of people that we are, and they are going to be touched by illness. So it's important that everybody tries to find a different way to help what is already existing. Um, thank you very much for being here. Uh, the dream team must start. The dream team is what it is now, but the dream team must be the people all together. Millions of people must become the dream team all together with the doctors. Thank you very much. Let's get going. And it's beautiful. Uh, the goal of the meeting is really, um, when I discuss with Jean-Jacques, is okay, we, I mean, the idea, the concept is, is absolutely beautiful, but we don't have so many uh, evidence, uh, clinical evidence that uh, this concept is working in cancer. And the idea is to gather many of you who first have a rationale to, uh, 
to these different approaches about treating cancer, but also some clinical experience. And the idea and the goal of this meeting and this day on, of work is really to put the evidence we have, and we have very good scientists who have worked on this concept on different aspects of it, and also to have some clinical evidence, which are, of course, limited. We don't have big randomized studies so far, and the question is, can we do that, and uh, what we should do, and that will be the end of the day to try to all together to build some things that we could do for the future. And that's really what we want to reach at the end of the day. And I want to thank everyone who came from the US, uh, every part of the world, Germany, UK, uh, France, of course. And I'm um, happy to be here. Some of you are probably skeptical about what's going to come from this meeting. I don't know what's going to come, but I'm sure something nice will, at the end, uh, be issued from this meeting. So we start with the first session, but some rationale we have, and um, we put here four speakers. The first one will be William Lee. So William is, uh, is the president of the Angiogenesis Foundation, and he spent many, many years looking at uh, angiogenesis, uh, the way to improve angiogenesis. And as you know, angiogenesis is a very important part of, the, of cancer. We, we first met with, uh, with William long time ago when I first worked on angiogenesis by uh, trying shark cartilage. So it was one of my first experience, a very interesting experience about uh, trying to, to, to fight against angiogenesis by giving to patients shark cartilage extract. So it was a nice uh, study. It was the first time we did an international study in kidney cancer. It turned out not to be positive, but it was the first step, and now we have anti-angiogenic drugs which work in, in kidney cancer and in other cancers here. So William is going to give a, a talk on uh, different aspects on, uh, on this uh, one. Then we'll have Val Walter Longo, who is working uh, both in Italy and in US, uh, who is uh, has dedicating a lot of time about fasting and uh, what's the consequence of fasting. Then we'll have Dr. Hope, who is going to give uh, a talk on uh, the title has, has been changed a little bit because of some uh, last-minute uh, adaptation on cellular and travascular targeting agents, what we know about that. And uh, then Thomas Seyfried will, will give a, another talk on uh, press pulse on non-toxic therapeutic strategy for the metastatic resolution of cancer. So you can see different aspects. So we'll have the four talks. Um, and then we'll, have, we'll ask the four speakers to come here and we'll ask questions and try to to, to see what, what's come here. So William, you, you, you are going to start.